VRChat's mirrors, arguably the most used object in any maps, and certainly the laggiest, have very competent performance settings that can be taken advantage of, so long as the world creator makes those options available within the world. We'll be setting up a system to toggle between three different quality settings of mirrors. The first one will have a resolution cap and only reflect the player themselves from the mirror reflection layer, a layer designed specifically to show off only the player. The second will have a higher resolution cap, but will show all players within the reflection, using the mirror reflection as well as the player layers. Finally, our last mirror will have no resolution cap, showing off all the objects in our scene and only hiding the UI and UI menu layers, because, come on, we don't need the nameplates and menus cluttering the view. With that out of the way, let's get started. So in our scene here, you'll see I have a few things set up right away. I have a box, well, a cube used as our floor. I have this little pile of capsules and boxes that'll be our pretend friend when we're checking for the other players a little nameplate up here, this is just a little text on some canvas that's on the UI layer to show that one of them is hiding the UI so you don't have to worry about nameplates. Over here I have a mirror that I made in Blender and textured in Substance Painter. And you'll see it's reflecting here, but that's actually just because it has a very strong uh, metallic level on this material and is reflecting the information that is coming from this reflection probe I have here. And that's just baked with everything that's static in the scene. And that's just to give it a little like fake, oh, this is a mirror, come up and check it out because it's a mirror kind of visual. What we have here is a little set of four buttons that use the UI system that I set up in the previous video. And all we have to worry about here is that they have this script on them, which is a UI send event script, which is essentially just here. Let me open up for you. All that it does is it takes a Udon behavior target variable. And when you click this button or when you interact with it, so you can use this same script on real buttons or UI buttons, it will run the send event event. And if it's networked, it'll use the networked version and send the custom event to the target Udon behavior. And if it's not networked, it'll just send it locally for yourself. So I've preset all of these over here with their target, the mirror, which is just a empty Udon behavior. And on them, I have mirror off, mirror low, mirror med, and mirror high. And those would just be the different events that we will be calling inside of this mirror to control which layer of quality we're on. So on our mirror, let's do a right click, create VRChat Udon, Udon Graph Program Asset. And we will call this Mirror Quality. We will drag this on here, open Udon Graph, and we're in here. So let's start this out with getting the one variable that we need, and that is a game object array. Just space to search game object, and we can just hit enter and get this one. But since we need an array, we can just select this, and this game object here, we can just select the one with the brackets right below it. And I'm going to call this mirrors and make this public so that we can set this inside of the inspector. So if we go to our mirror object, you'll see it has a little drop down with some numbers over here and some slots. And since we have three different types of mirrors of type three, and these say none, it's a little bit hard to see because the UI for arrays and Udon behaviors aren't great. They're a lot better in Udon Sharp, and I expect it to look better with the graph overhaul coming up. But for now, we can just put these into each of these three spots. And since we put them here, we know that mirrors zero is the low mirror, mirrors one is the medium mirror, and mirrors two is the high mirror. So let's start out with the most important event of all, mirror off, because turning off mirrors is what people do to save their frames. So we'll do, do add node, custom event, hit enter, and let's call this mirror off 
So we need to iterate through all three different mirrors and do the same thing to all three of them. So the way we do that is we use a for loop. So it says like, for this amount of things, do that. And we can just find that by searching for. Enter. We'll put this here and we'll connect this in here. So you'll see there's a few things going on here. Basically, it counts through a number of things. And for every value inside of that count, it'll do something within the body node. So like this can go on to something else and it'll do that a bunch of times. And then as soon as this is done, it will go through this one and then you can have more things happen. While you are in the body node, uh, you can get the value of index, which is whatever the current count is at. And then you can use that to change information inside of your repeated segment. So we're going to start at zero and need to count through all the different objects in our game object array. So the way we do that is get var. So we can get the variable mirrors. And then we do game object brackets get length. Now you'll see here there's game object dot get space length and game object dot get length as one word. We need the space length because get length takes an instance and a dimension and that is more than we need to worry about and you will almost always just need this one. So we'll select this one and drag it up here. I uh, will pop our mirrors into this one and we'll take this value and set it as the end value. So this will count through all of the amount of times it needs to uh, for it to go through all the different objects in this array. So while this is happening, we want to set our game objects to be inactive. So game object set active. Here we go. Uh, so while it's happening, we take it from the body and we need to set that specific mirror to be false. So the way that we're going to do that is to get a certain value from this array. So we're going to copy this get variable over here and we need to use a game object brackets space get as the first one right there. If we drag this up here, we can put this variable into instance and let's say we're on the zeroth slot of our for loop. We can get that number through this and just say, okay, the zero value of mirrors, which over here we have set to be mirror low, this one will be set inactive. Then let's say it's on the second step where it would be on one. It will take one and set that one to be inactive. And it will go through that until it's gotten all of the things within the length of this array. And that is everything that we need to do for the mirror off. So what we need to do now is we need to set up a event to turn on one of them, but not the others. So the way we do that is we'll copy this first section, drag it down here, and we'll change this to mirror low, because this one will be enabling the lowest quality of mirror that we have. That would be mirrors zero. In order to do that, we need to get a branch, which is just a true false check branch. We'll set that here and take that through the body. And we need to see if this step equals zero because zero is the one we have our low one on. So we'll do int equality. Now it starts out with joints because joints have INT in it as well, but we, you, we can just go down to int.equality and grab that one. Put that here. We'll put this in there. And we need to know if this index equals zero. Put it in either of these spots. There we go. So if we're presently on zero, we'll take this and go to true. And then we'll copy this segment. 
And while we're on that one, we'll set it to be true. We'll also get this index here. Instead of saying zero, we'll grab it from there. Because that's what we did up here. It just didn't copy because we didn't copy the original for loop from there. So this will set the first mirror to be true. Now we want to set the other mirrors to be false. So we'll grab this and put it here. We'll set this one to be inactive. We'll drag it, go into there, and we'll get this index and put it in here. Actually, I'll move this down here just so the lines aren't crossing over everything. And this is the mirror low event. Uh, now I can copy this twice and do it for a medium and high and change this zero to be one and two for both of them. So I'm just gonna do that quick. All right, I've copied those and slipped them around here. Um, that should be everything after I change this to med and this one to high. Perfect. Hit compile a few times. But since, of course, I don't trust these graphs to work right now, Control D to duplicate, delete the old one, get rid of the one that was added at the end of this one, Control S, go to mirror, and slap this one in instead. And since the variables are the same as the previous one in this component, it autofills with low, medium, and high. So now, this guarantees that it compiles, so we can press play and check out to see if it works over in our inspector. We'll hit off, nothing happens. Low, it enables our low mirror. Medium, it enables our medium mirror. And high, it enables our high mirror. Perfect. Uh, this should work in game as well, but I'm gonna make the Udon Sharp version of this as well first, and then we can try them out in game. So I'm just going to create U Sharp and call this mirror mirror quality sharp again only named sharp because we already have mirror quality in the same folder and we cannot have uh, two asset files with the same name just hit enter and we'll let this compile the script and i'll double click it to open all right here we are in visual studio code and i can just get rid of this first void start because we won't be using it uh this will be identical to the graph asset version so we'll start with a public game object array with the brackets and mirrors semicolon now we'll need our first event which is the mirror off so public void mirror off we'll do the brackets and we'll do four now let me set this up quick int i equals zero I less than mirrors dot length I plus plus. So what this is saying uh, is this is a for loop and we start our count at zero as a integer with the value I. While I is less than the length of the mirrors array, it will iterate its pound itself by a one. Saying plus plus is the same thing as saying plus equals one or equals i plus one. It's just a shorthand way to say either of those two. So after this, we'll hit brackets and we can do everything we want in here. So since this is the one that's turning the mirrors off, all we need to do is say mirrors i dot set set active and we'll set this to be false. Now let's go and do our mirror low. Public void mirror low. And I'm going to copy this because it's going to be mostly the same. Uh, but instead in here we will do if i equals zero and we'll do our brackets, or, and then we'll do else, we'll do the next section. So we'll copy this, put this here. So if it's zero, we will say true. 
if it is not zero, meaning it's any other one that isn't the one we want, we will set it to be false. Now I'll copy this event, uh, paste it two more times, and change this to med, this one to high, and this one to one, and this one to two. Perfect. Hit control S and let's head back into Unity. All right, back in Unity, we can select our mirror object and swap the mirror quality value here and it compile all. This just compiles it inside of this rather than uh, Unity compiling a C sharp script. Basically hitting compile on that script tells this component to turn this script into something readable as an Udon behavior. Back on our object, we see now our array is in a dropdown, which has a size value up here, three, and our element values and a longer list so we can see the name on. This is typically how you see arrays with most scripting in Unity. Fortunately, since we had already filled this out in the previous one and recognized that, hey, mirrors was a value that exists, it fills it out for us again. So let's hit play and double check to see if this works. I will go over here, mirror off, does nothing. Mirror low, works. Mirror med, works. And mirror high, also works. Perfect. So that means the interaction between these buttons and our scripts uh, works perfectly. So let's boot up VRChat and just make sure that this proof of concept works in game. All right, here we are back in VRChat and we have our friend named uh, Other Player here with us and he'll be proving some of the levels of our mirror. So mirror off, of course, does nothing. Mirror low, it's only us. And if we get close, it looks pretty accurate, but if we move away, I'm not sure if you'll be able to notice it on your monitor, but your character starts to pixelate from a distance, which shows the resolution quality. Uh, mirror med, we have a slightly higher resolution quality, uh, but our friend here shows up, proving that, yes, other players can be visible in it. And mirror high, uh, we no longer pixelate, and it shows everything except the UI layers. So if I open my menu here, you don't see it in the mirror at all. Uh, that way, it doesn't interrupt you when there's like 12 people up next to the mirror and everyone's nameplates are just cluttering the faces. So that should be it for the mirrors. Hey, thanks for watching. To keep these tutorials interruption free, I do not monetize any of my videos on YouTube. Instead, these videos are made possible by the generous supporters over on my Patreon. If you wish to use any of the scripts and assets seen in these videos, or simply want to support the channel, feel free to check out my Patreon page yourself. We presently have a goal of $200 a month to support hiring a Japanese subtitler for these videos so any support will go a long way to make these tutorials more accessible to more people. Again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.